Yeah, it's uh, that was uh, Johnny was our let me think now our seventh winner. So he filled the the shoes of Phil Keane, because both racers extremely competent British GT racers, and and so I had I, I was 100 percent sure that the team would be delighted with him, and and very very quickly when after only 10 laps after he'd been in the car, he was on the pace with the rest of the team members. Yeah, it's um, high pressure to be fair, um, but it only hits home when you actually go over early January, you jump on a flight from Gatwick and you get to Orlando and you get to the circuit and then you see what the tournament is all about and you, you take it all in, you know, it's one of the biggest, you know, American sports car races is yeah. Daytona. And this is just a test day and you know, getting up to speed with the car and proper. But what was it like walking into the garage as the prize winner with some pretty serious teammates? Yeah, I mean very special. I mean I had drivers like Simon Pagino as a teammate, Dane Cameron, and then at current people that went on that year were enough to win the championship with uh, Action Express. And I have to say the prize was big in itself, but just the opportunity to do it with a team like Action Express. I mean they were incredible, a team that I've been in that championship for a long time and it's high pressure because you go in there as a prize winner having had a great year off the back of you know, Brick GT but it's their first race of the year, it's their big race is Daytona 24 hour and you're given the opportunity to race you know, with them so they want a result as much as you do and, and obviously Sunoco do um, and it's brilliant. I would say for me it's still one of the best prizes out there you know across Europe and maybe across the world to give any young up-and-coming driver an opportunity to, to maybe turn their attention to sports cars but also maybe pop them on the map on, yeah. on what American sports car racing is all about. And how long did it take you to get up to speed and feel comfortable and dance with the music? It wasn't too, I mean it wasn't too bad to be fair. I, I, personally I hadn't done much prototype stuff uh, prior to Daytona but yeah, the team were quite nice in terms of giving me a little bit more seat time uh, just to acquaint myself with the machinery that I was racing with. But yeah, a couple of sessions and I was there bang on the pace with my teammates and that reassured them obviously that I was there to sort of do a job and, and try and obviously be fast and, and try and hopefully potentially try and get a podium. I remember one, one uh, typical situation or one specific spe situation was when he was in the car and suddenly we, he, he reported smoke from the rear and we thought, oh, no, 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 he's broken the car, don't let my driver break the car, we can't have that. And it, but um, he, what was good with Johnny was that he realised something was wrong with the car, he, he, he radioed into the team, so the team was prepared, and so the car straight into the garage, and at that point, I can't remember if we were second or if we were leading, we were right up uh, with, with the other teams. And what happened was that uh, a drive shaft, uh, a CV joint, had overheated. And, uh, but the team didn't know what it was. They just had all this smoke and it was red hot. Uh, so we lost 12 laps. And uh, I think we still finished fourth uh, in, in class. And uh, when the same thing happened for the sister car, uh, of course they knew exactly what it was. You know, we were actually leading the race overall at one point. We were fighting with the sister car, which was the five car. Um, and unfortunately, we're leading the race up until we had a small drive shaft issue with both cars, um, which robbed maybe a fairy tale story for, for Anders and obviously everyone at Sunoco. Um, well, I hope it didn't happen when you were driving. Fortunately, it did, yeah. <laughs> it was one of those situations that, as drivers, you know, we all make small er errors. And it was one of those that I never, and I thought, where, where did that come from? Straight into the obviously pit lane. The team done an amazing job turning the car around and, and fixing the problem. And then exactly sort of 45 minutes later, the sister car had exactly the same issue on the same corner. And it was just one of those, you know, it was maybe, you know, a small part that went wrong with the car. No fault team, but maybe just a, one of those bad luck situations. But uh, I felt sorry for the team because we just worked so hard that weekend to get us in a situation to lead that, lead that race. But I, I've still got a cool picture of my name at the top of the leaderboard and, and big names below that. You so, know, they are racing and, and on the leaderboard, my name was up front. Um, so yeah, I, I would say I'll Sunoco a lot because it was a, an exceptionally fun weekend, but probably one of the best prizes I'll, I'll ever win. What was the, looking back now, what were your impressions of the car when you started to get up to speed? How did that compare with how you imagined it was gonna be? 
the way there were a lot of different things for sure. The biggest thing was the power. Obviously, um, I was in GT racing. We've got a lot of power, but we have aids like you know traction control, etc. And they do, but they're a bit. At that time, the DPI car was a little bit low on technology, so the traction control was very much an agricultural traction control system. Right. Um, cold slicks, you know, which obviously <laughs> when you're doing a three to five stint early hours of the morning and it obviously the temperature can drop at Daytona even getting out the pit lane was quite a tricky task in itself um, and little things like when you box and you come to a stop in the pit lane you don't turn the engine off you keep the engine running so there was a lot of procedures regulations right. safety car restarts and stuff but I have to say I think I learned quite quickly and how aggressive the restarts were at Daytona because obviously you then pit in your class so, so when you do come out you're in your pack, which is brilliant for the fans because you're always guaranteed at the start of a restart, action pack stuff. And I was under pressure. I think I was second or third overall in the field and I was doing my sort of first restart. And it was just like, it was a sprint. It was like it wasn't a 24 hour race, the, the first day restart I sort of got acquainted with. And it was aggressive. And then you learn quickly how you do it, you know, and how you get everything up to temperature and how you attack that situation. I spoke to John Gore, race director of uh, Aston Martin, before uh, to make sure that he was eligible because he was on the card of being an Aston Martin driver then. And uh, he was delighted because he knew that he would get more experience and be faster after doing this. So, and and uh, when I tweeted to John Gore sort of his position, what times he was doing, uh, when he was holding off uh, uh, Montoya and I said, I think you need to increase <laughs> Johnny's chairs now because he's doing bloody well.